grandfather, Philip Dabney, a redemptorist from Washington, D.C. Welcome again to our monthly praying with the icon of our mother perpetual help, which involves three simple steps, gazing, listening, and praying. The theme of my homily today is Mary, the finder of grace. So I invite you to focus more closely on the hands of Mary. They're not manicured hands. They've never seen emery boards or nail polish. They are a woman's hands with their long tapering fingers, but they're the hands of a working mother. Her strong left hand gives her child support. With her right hand, she lets him cling to her in her startled fright. But notice the fingers of her right hand. They do not turn back to herself, but they point to her son, as if she were saying to us what she said to the waiters at the wedding feast of Cana, Listen to him. Do whatever he tells you. So we'll take some time now, quietly contemplating the beautiful icon of our mother of perpetual help. Let her see into your thoughts, into your heart. Hold nothing back. She is your mother. And follow the gesture of her hand as she invites you to listen to her son. He is the way. For though she is his mother, he is her Lord and Savior, as he is ours. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom says, those who love me, I also love, and those who seek me, find me. With me are riches and honor, enduring wealth and prosperity. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than pure gold, and my revenue than choice silver. On the way of duty, I walk along the paths of justice, granting wealth to those who love me and filling their treasuries. Happy the person watching daily at my gates. 
waiting at my doorposts. For the one who finds me finds life and wins favor from the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but I enjoy shopping for gifts. However, I don't like to get just any gift that's readily available or reasonable in price or a common item on every gift list like a pen or a book or a popular CD. I prefer to take my time looking for something that I believe the person I'm buying it for would need or could definitely use or appreciate. So I'm not simply looking for anything. I'm looking for something in particular, something unique for the person whom I know and love. For instance, Years ago, I was shopping for a Christmas gift for my mother at the mall. I went into Bloomingdale's. At first, I looked at the carefully beautiful fragrances. While they smelled lovely, somehow I knew that none of them was a fragrance my mother would wear. They just seemed a little too strong for a woman I experienced as more subtle in her taste. I then looked at the jewelry and the kitchenware and figurines and ladies' purses. After about two hours, I was weary from looking and decided to try again the next day. I was confident that I would eventually find what I was looking for. It would not need to be something I would know simply by seeing it. It would actually involve my heart because when I saw what I had been searching for, my heart would tell me I finally found it. The next day, I was walking through Macy's in New York City and I came to picture frames. And suddenly, I remembered that I had taken a lovely picture of my mother and father that fall. They were walking in front of me and they had their arms around each other's back. It looked like they were joined at the hip and they were even in step together. It was such a tender picture of intimacy, capturing their 65 years of marriage. So when I saw the picture frames, I knew in my heart, this is what I wanted. I had found the gift I knew my mother would love. I bought the lovely frame put the picture in it, and gave it to her for Christmas. She loved it, and she was totally surprised by it. You know, all of us have our moments of darkness when we are in need of help, but we don't always know exactly what it is that we need. <laughs> for instance, there are mornings when I wake up very anxious about the day that lies ahead of me. And the worries I carry weigh heavy on my mind and make me restless. I'm like Martha in the Gospel. It's just one of those days where I'm anxious about many things. At such moments, and believe me, they are frequent enough, I always begin by praying to Mary, our Mother of Perpetual Help, because I believe that she will find the grace, which is God's gift, that will help me the most. I can't tell you how often I've been surprised by Mary. The grace I need comes at a moment when I least expect it and in ways I never imagined. I like to call these gifts of grace Merry moments. She gives me the help I need in the way I need it and at the time I need it. Here's an example. One rainy 
wind, windy Saturday morning, I was being driven by a Vietnamese redemptorist and friend of mine, Father Peter Lin, to the mother house of the IHM sisters outside of Philadelphia to give a retreat for the week. I told Father Peter in the car that I was very anxious because I didn't think that the talks I had to offer the sisters were as clear and as well developed as I would have liked. He suggested we pray the rosary together. As we drove and prayed, I quietly asked Mary, our mother perpetual help, at the beginning of each decade to find for me the grace I needed most. At that moment, what I thought I needed most was something to enlighten me and give me strength. I needed wisdom and courage. Now, all along the way, I kept looking out the window of the car at the dark green countryside being drenched by the falling rain. And then it happened. I suddenly noticed the wind blowing through the trees and the limbs of the trees were swaying with the breeze, and the leaves on the limbs were waving, like flags on a parade route, or people's hands waving at the person passing by. I remember thinking to myself, the trees, they're waving at me. They're greeting me. As I continued to focus on this gentle gesture of nature, the anxiety in me began to dissipate, and I even waved back with my left hand while fingering the rosary with my right. By the time I reached the mother house, I felt at peace and filled with joy. Of course, I wasn't aware at that moment this was the gift I needed most. It wasn't until later that night while I was quietly praying and reflecting on that day that my eyes were opened. I had asked for wisdom and courage, but instead I was given peace and joy. And in that calmness, I found the courage I needed to begin the retreat. In the book of Proverbs, there is a beautiful verse which I have always applied to Mary. They that in the early morning watch for me shall find me. Now, another translation of those words, shall find me, reads, shall find grace, which implies, of course, that to find Mary is to find grace. St. Bernard of Clairvaux takes this image a step further and he urges us, seek grace and seek it through Mary, the finder of grace. I like this title, don't you? Mary, the finder of grace. Mary is the finder of grace, carefully searching for the particular grace she knows we need looking for the grace which her heart tells her will truly help us, either to find our way or to free us from the temptation we face or assure us that we are not alone or encourage us not to be afraid. Secondly, Mary, who is full of grace, searches for the grace we sinners have lost which we can't find without her help. We lose grace because we fail to ask for it when it is needed, or we do not take it when it's offered because we give in to a temptation. St. Alphonsus exhorts all of us who have lost grace to go to Mary, and we will find grace with her. He tells us confidently, Urge her, tell her, Mary, give me back what I have lost and what you have found. Because Mary always finds what she seeks and will not fail us. At the beginning of our service, I mentioned how in the icon of our mother perpetual help, the fingers of Mary's right hand point to her son 
as if she is saying to us, listen to him. Do whatever he tells you. He is the way. Another interpretation could be, she is saying, behold my son and your perpetual help. He is the one who gives the grace that I am seeking for you. singing this simple chant to Mary entitled Mary the Dawn. It's a beautiful meditation using analogies of Mary and Jesus, many of which come right from the Old Testament. Mary the Dawn, Christ the perfect day, Mary the Gay, Christ the heavenly way, Mary the root, Christ the mystic vine, Mary the grape, Christ the sacred wine, Mary the wheat, Christ the living bread. Mary the stem, Christ the rose blood red. Mary the font, Christ the healing flood. Mary the chalice, Christ the saving blood. Mary the temple, Christ the temple's Lord, Mary the shrine, Christ the God adored, Mary the beacon, Christ the haven's rest, Mary the mirror, Christ the vision glass. Mary the mother, Christ the mother's son, both ever blessed while endless ages run. Let 
us pray together to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Mother of Perpetual Help, with greatest confidence we come before your holy icon to seek your intercession. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have been broken to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of Sorrows, pray for us during these difficult times. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect all those who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to the challenges of life. Amen. We hope you have enjoyed this experience of praying with the icon of our Mother Perpetual Help. We thank you for joining us, especially all those who have enrolled in the Mother of Perpetual Help Society. We will continue this prayer experience every third Saturday of the month. So please join us again on Saturday, November 21st, beginning at 10 a.m. The Lord be with you. May the Lord Jesus Christ Son of Mary of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It is the custom for Redemptorists to sing the Salva Regina, an ancient Latin hymn that is the English prayer, Hail Holy Queen. Please join with us in singing this lovely chant. Salve. 